please you can share your screen Do you see my screen? Yes, Hannah, you can see your screen. Take us to the first slide, please. Okay. Teacher, this one? Yes, Hannah, you can even start with the first one that shows which subject we are doing. Okay, thank you so much, friends, for your patience. We are here now. We are ready to start. Mm, thank you for your patience. And I hope we shall stay calm, stay com composed, and we go to the very end of our lesson. A lot has been planned. Please pay attention. Don't distract other people in the meeting chat because I'll be watching and I'll be ready to take action. Let's pay attention. Um, let's plan to participate. There is going to be a lot of reading, listening, answering, and everything. So I pray that we have an interactive session and benefit. Yes, like you can see on our first display, it's going to be English. Mm. Some people are asking, which lesson are we having? Yes, this is English, and it's our lesson two for this holiday. We met last week, and here we are again to discuss more on uh, patriotism. Yes. So, uh, Hannah, you can take us to the next slide. Yes, our topic is patriotism, like we discussed last week. Um, we are going to have a lesson review, and some people who remember what we covered last time in English are going to share with me. I want us to remember what we studied. It's good practice for you to remember where you're coming from, to progress to where you want to be. Yes, I don't want us to be like boxer. That, um, that studied A, B, C, and when they added the other three letters of the alphabet, he forgot the very first one. So I want us to remember what we covered last week and then progress to our work for that day. Okay, Hannah, you can take us to the next slide. Thank you. So it's time for lesson review. What did we look at last time? Uh huh. It was a passage from patriotism or from the chapter patriotism. Uh huh. We agreed on some things. What are we supposed to do when we are reading to understand? How are we supposed to answer these questions? You realize that every time you're doing your, your paper, it has section A and section A has two passages. If you don't know how to read, you don't know how to answer, you may end up failing. So if you know you were here last time and you remember what we talked about, reading, comprehension, and the, the, the passage that we covered last time, you can raise your hand and you take us through the lesson review. Anyone that remembers the lesson that we had last week, the passage about patriotism, what we talked about, what it was about, and what did you write in your book concerning patriotism? under English. I know you're doing many other subjects, but I'm hoping that you're always taking notes. If you wrote anything, anything that you want to tell us to help us remember what we covered last time. Yes, we have some people that are joining for the first time. 
and we need to to keep them posted so if you if you remember what we covered last time and the the passage that we looked at or if you know any guidelines on how to read to understand what you need to do how many times you need to read the passage how you're supposed to answer how are your answers supposed to look like just raise your hand and take us through because that's what we covered last time okay so thank you faith you can share with us mm -hmm. good afternoon good afternoon faith yes i'm going to share something little about what we studied last time last time we studied about patriotism and we said patriotism is one's love for his or her country and the environment. Then we also looked at a passage, we read it, and probably while reading the passage, we have to read it two times. And so for us to go it through well and understand it well. Then we also looked at, answered the questions in the passage, and one of them, was talking about most, most probably the passage was talking about how people are failing, uh, are failing to learn their national anthem, the reasons why they are failing. And one of them was they were are, one of them are people have failed to learn their national national anthem because it is in English and they want it to be converted to their local languages. That's what I can remember. Thank you amazing thank you so much faith that's wonderful and indeed that's what we did last time i have dash please unmute and take us through what you remember from our previous class well, um, i wasn't there but <clears throat> um my teacher told me that when you're answering a passage mm. okay, we do it you first read the questions, then you come back and read the passage so that you find maybe a statement familiar to the question you underline and answer it. Thank you. Wow. Thank you for sharing that tip. And uh, today we are even going to make it perfect. Yes, we're going to see how to do it. So that's a tip you can borrow from this lesson that if you're doing comprehension, it is very wise of you to first read the questions for you to have direct reading, to know that mm, these are the questions and these are the things I am looking for. Yes, so that your first reading is not wasted because usually there is this panic, how will I finish? Maybe you want to do summary, you want to, you want to do the, the comprehension passage that comes next and maybe you have a letter to write in section B. So the panic can be there and it is, it is natural, it is okay. Just deal with it like that. Start with a question so that you know what you're looking out for. And when you go for your second reading, the answers will be unfolding naturally and easily. Okay, so I have Tronella. Whose hand is up? Tronella, you can unmute. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to you. I remember last time we studied about national symbols and mm -hmm. we say we find it and we said that national symbols are patriotic symbols representing a nation and a country worldwide. Then we gave some examples of national symbols and we say that these include the national flag, national emblem, coat of arms, and the anthem. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. It's very important. You know, I love it. I love it when we study and a week passes, but we still remember what we covered. Thank you so much for taking us through that uh, session of lesson review. And indeed, last time, that's what we covered. We started on the topic, patriotism, uh, which is the third last topic in Senior 3. And um, I pray that you, you pay attention today because we are going to read more about it and we shall see how to progress. This is one last warning to the people that are disturbing others or distracting them in the meeting chat. Please don't do that. Pay attention. That's the least that you can do. Pay attention, please. Okay, so yes, we agreed that when you're going to phrase your answers, um, 
always focus on the tense. If your question is in the past tense, yes, you must answer it in the past tense. Yes. Uh, if they say, where did the children go after meeting their teacher? Your answer must be in the past tense. The children went to the clinic. Went. Yes. Um, so in case your question has that, please follow the tense given. Now, um, if your question has uh, a plural form, your answer must also be in plural. So tense, pluralization, and many other things are supposed to be followed. Now, another tip is you must write your answer in full. You must use a full sentence. Yes, that's good. And if you're going to answer questions concerning the meanings of words as used in the passage, you must begin to not repeat anything. If they say, give us the meaning of the word domestic violence as used in the passage, yes, you must define, you must give a word that replaces domestic and also violence. Don't say violence that happens at home. Instead, say mistreatment of people in a family setting, maybe. Mm. That makes it easier. So don't repeat any word. Don't let any word define itself. That's one of the uh, things that we agreed on last time. Mm. Uh, okay, Hannah, you can take us to the next slide as I look at what people are saying in the chat. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, dash. And I'm sorry, I didn't lower my hand. Okay, it is okay. Uh, so I need one volunteer to read for us the lesson objectives. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, Bridget. Yes, Bridget. You can unmute and you take us through our lesson objectives. Okay, today is by the end of this lesson, I express their feelings clearly. In the last one, these adverbs of did you correctly perform at least five sentences about patriotism. Okay, thank you so much for reading for us and those are the things we intend to achieve by the end of this lesson. Yes, we are going to learn how to express our feelings. Well, we are basing on the topic patriotism, but the, the goal is for you to learn how to express your feelings clearly. Someone should not be asking you how you feel and say, I feel good. How good? We are going to learn how to express our feelings. And I've realized that these questions are very common. Yes, what are your feelings towards? maybe a character in the passage they give you. Yes, for people who do literature, it's a lot easier. But for children who don't do literature, they struggle. They struggle to answer questions about feelings. So I found it very important to factor that in. Feelings and lessons. Yes, you find that they give you, they give you a question asking you the lessons you've learned from the passage. Once again, for children who do literature, it is very easy because that's what they do. Expressing feelings, lessons, you know, characterizing people. These questions are crossing to your literature because now, literature, to your English, because literature is embedded in English. And uh, it's very important for us to hold discussions on them. Feelings, lessons, and character traits. But for today, we are not going to discuss characterization. We're going to look at feelings and, yeah, some little bit of lessons in the in the passage when we get there. Yes, uh, we are going to listen to at least one article, which I'm going to read out aloud for you. It's about patriotism. 
and then we're going to express our feelings about what we read, what we listen to. And finally, we are going to have a session on adverbs of degree and learn how to use them correctly to form at least five sentences, to, to know them and use them to construct sentences. Okay, Hannah, we could go to the next, to the next slide. Feva, your hand is up. Please unmute and tell me, is there an issue? Oh, okay. I think you had forgotten to lower it. It is okay. Uh, okay, so here we go. We are going to learn how to express feelings. Feelings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any good volunteer to read for me these questions? Yes, Tima. I don't know how you read your name. Your name got up first. Read through the questions other people and plan to answer. I'll be glad to have your responses. Yes, okay, Tima, you can unmute. Mm -hmm. Many times, children do amazing things to uplift the status of their country. What are some of these acts? How did you feel the last time you did something good for your country or community or school? Okay. The questions are there for us. If you know you can answer, please keep your hand up. I want to know... Hmm? Uh, some of the things that children can do to uplift the status of their country, yes, you can bring it down to a school or to your community. Uh, so in your answer, I want you to give me at least three things or maybe two, as many as you can, things that children can do to uplift the status of their community, school or country. And then go ahead to tell me how you felt the last time you did something that you are convinced is good for your country. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Let me see. Uh I have Malik's. Let me start with Malik's. Malik's, you can unmute. Uh, things that you can do to show that you are patriot to your country or community. One, it is participating in community service, like mm -hmm. cleaning the same. Two blood donation to those who are who need in blood now how i can yeah. feel i feel like helping others on the way on the in the way that they, they can benefit from my service for example draining away saganat water to fight to fight malaria ah uh, that is my opinion okay uh so malik have you done any of those things before yes i've ever done them how did you feel, you as a person? How did you feel after doing that? I feel so pleased because I saw the day when so I. How did out, you feel? I feel so happy and pleased to myself because the day when I, I donated my blood to someone, there's someone mm -hmm. who was suffering from okay. ego got an accident and okay. he, he had no blood. So I gave out my blood to him. And I feel mm. so happy, so, and I feel so happy that I am, I managed to save his life. Okay, thank you so much, Malik. And uh, yes, personally, I would like to thank you for saving that person's life. It makes a difference. Sure. Uh, may God bless you for that spirit. Yes, Malik felt happy after saving someone's life, doing a patriotic act of donating blood. Perfect. Okay, um, now I'm going to ask someone who is using a phone that has Miss Nachan's Juliet Gabriel to unmute and share with us. Thank you, Madam, for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the, the accident thing that someone can do to uplift the status of their country is by engaging in athletics, like mm -hmm. running, Okay, and uh, have you taken part in any of those activities? I can't lie, I've never done any of those. <laughs> okay, I like your honesty. 
Okay. But it would be a good feeling. You would feel proud of yourself if you did. Hmm. Take time and do something that makes you feel like you have done something to contribute to your country. But thank you for your submission. Um. So I'm going to now allow Hadia to unmute. Um, I think uh, some of the these acts that people can do to show patriotism to the country, one, uh, representing the country in regionals, nationals, and um, state levels, in things like uh, debates, um, galas, like swimming galas, then um, community service, as everyone else has mentioned, donating clothes, blood donations, and other stuff like that. Then personally, I've carried out like two, blood donation and community service, uh, giving out clothes, um, cleaning the environment. And I've also represented Uganda in regionals debating. Okay. Then I felt really happy. Okay, I, I was very happy and honored that I could do something for my school and my community and my country. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hadia. That's a wonderful submission over there. Uh, someone is using iPhone Pro Max. Let me give them an opportunity to unmute and they tell me their name and they give me their submission. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon to you. What's your name? Uh, my name is Lucky Arnold. Yes, Lucky. Happy to hear from you. Please give us your response. Um, things that people can do. Mm -hmm. uh, serve the environment. It's like participating in community service. Mm -hmm. Also, like um, observing the environment, you know, planting of mm -hmm. trees. And also, mm -hmm. another thing that I can do so that is patriotic like maybe reporting uh, corrupt people to the police or to the government so that they can be hurt. They can come action can be taken from them. That shows that someone is a patriot over the country. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you done any of those? Of course, I've done some tree planting. And I feel happy when I environment and uh, yeah okay thank you thank you so much lucky nikki thank you madam so uh one of the things children can do so as to be patriotic is respecting their anthems like when it's time to sing the anthem you should follow the rules, like stand upright and sing it very well. Then, mm -hmm. yeah. Then also, what? Uh, cleaning the environment, doing community service. Yeah. But mainly, you should know the history of your country and be able to defend your mm -hmm. country. And what you... okay. Have you Call done any it. of those, Nikki? Yeah. Um, I love the Uganda yeah. National Anthem. A lot. Mm. How do you feel when when you are at school or maybe a national event and they are singing the anthem and then you stand and sing along? What are your feelings? Oh. Okay. Okay. I feel, um, I'm excited and also I'm amazed because okay, it's just so beautiful when you sing it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your beautiful answer. Yes, Nikki is always excited. That's a wonderful way to express your feelings and uh, also amazed at how beautiful the, the, the anthem is and how beautifully it is actually sung. And I think maybe she thinks about it and reflects on how she loves her motherland. Yeah, that's a good way to express your feelings, dear Nikki. Okay, over to you, Julia. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I'm participating in scouting 
and do blood donation. Okay. Yeah. Have you taken part in them? Yes, scouting, yes. Hmm. How did you feel? I felt pleased and excited for supporting our country. Hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Julia. Yes, yes. Finally, for this activity, let's listen to Tronella. Uh, good evening once again. Mm -hmm. hey, good afternoon to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I have bondful activities, blood donation, and keeping the environment green. Mm -hmm. uh, for the bondful work, okay, it's like charity work, eh? Yes. Uh, I've ever done charity work. And I mm. okay before doing it, I felt I felt like I felt okay like unhappy. Why? Because okay, like what I was giving wasn't enough. Oh I wanted one, one more. Mm. And I but even felt Hmm. I felt pity for the people that you were giving to. Okay, but yes. it's good you made a difference. Don't feel sad about it. Yes. Okay. Then for blood donation, mm. I've never done it and I even fear. <laughs> That's also a I, feeling about that. <laughs> you yeah, fear. I, mm. Yeah. I also admire the people who who what? Who donate blood? Yeah, yeah. I like your honesty. And you're not alone. You're not alone. I also feel, I wish there was a way that you could get my blood without pricking my skin. But <laughs> <sighs> mm -hmm. keeping the environment green. Mm. That's speaking around yeah, stuff. I know you've done I, that, right? Yeah, I, we, all, we did it last time and I felt happy and proud of myself. Very good, very good. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for those beautiful answers. I can see that so far so good. People know how to express their feelings. So those are some of the words I want you to, to know and write down. Amazed, proud of myself, pity for the people that were disadvantaged, happy, excited, amazed, pleased. All those words are good ways to express your feelings. You must have them and you must use them very well. Okay, Hannah, let's move to the next slide. Yeah, very good. These are some of the adjectives. I came up with them. I knew that you were going to get some and I just got just a few. You know, the list is endless, but you know, we have to get examples. So these are some of the words I looked at uh, that we can use. <clears throat> to express our feelings uh, the words in green the adjectives and nouns in green are positive ones and then the ones in red are those that are not so good especially when people are not patriotic people who do things that hurt others um, you feel you know those words that are there we're going to get someone to read for us if you want to read for us, kindly raise your hand. I would like to have a, cha a look at this chat. Um, you must stand warned. If I find someone um, bullying any other, I am ready to remove them from the lesson for good, for good. Yes, I always check through to see what people are saying, how they are interacting. And uh, yes, people who are overly in the meeting chat also qualify to be removed from the lesson because they are not making good use of the resource. Okay, I want to look for someone that has not said a thing and this falls on Sanders. Sanders, please unmute and read for us these feelings. Just read them out aloud, that's all. Um. The feelings are proud, yeah, proud, happy, excited, joyous, 
admiration, encouraged, shocked, disappointed, disheartened, alarmed, terrified, and horrified. Yeah, thank you so much, Sanders. Those are just examples. And for people that are taking notes, you can just write them. Yes, when you're faced with a question or if you're going for an interview and they ask you how you feel, I don't want to find you beating about the bush. Mm? You must be able to express how you feel. If something has not gone well, yes, you can tell them, I am actually disappointed in the service. Yes, or I am shocked that we have people in this country that can actually do that. And if you're happy, yes, mention it. Say you're happy. Say you're excited. You're expectant. If the function is about to start and maybe someone passes around with a microphone and they ask you, ah, what are your feelings about today? Say, I'm so expectant. I, I don't know what to expect, but I know everything is going to be okay. Just feel free to express yourself clearly. It makes a difference. Mm. People who say, I feel good. I feel bad. Mm, that's vague. That's vague. Everyone will look at you and wonder if you've ever attended a lesson where you discussed feelings. So from this lesson, I am hoping that you'll be able to express your feelings um, yeah. rather clearly. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Hannah, we can get to the next slide. <laughs> you. Okay, next slide. Sorry. Uh, so here we're going to have a listening and comprehension activity. Yes. And uh, we have some questions, like we agreed at the start of this lesson, for you to manage comprehension very well, it's very important for you to first look at the questions and then go ahead to read. So I'm going to ask one, one volunteer to read for us these questions and we write them down or take note. And then <clears throat> we, shall, we shall listen to the passage that I'm going to read for you. And then we have the answers. Okay, who is going to read for us? I need someone that has not said a thing. If you know you've not said a thing and you're dying to speak, it's a good time for you to read for us. We're going to read the questions first, then, then the answers. Okay, I have someone called Shazam. Hmm, okay. I would like to know if that's your name indeed. Please unmute. Uh, yes, teacher. Is that your name? Uh, no. It's just, it's just a name that was on my device. Okay, so what's your name? I'm called Philip. Okay, Philip. Very happy to hear from you. Uh, so you're going to take us through our questions. I expect all of us to just write down. You say the first question has challenges we want to get challenges the second has this the third so that when you're answering it will become easier for you or as i'm reading if you get the question the, the answer to your question you just note it down okay over to you philip okay uh, mm -hmm. listening and comprehension mm -hmm. listen to the article your teacher is going to read and answer the following questions Describe the challenges Bigombe went through to acquire education. How would you compare those challenges with your own study, with your own, with your own today? Sorry, sorry. What role did education play in shaping Bigombe's future? If you weren't in school, what kind of person would you be now? How do you feel when you hear that Connie and his forces massacred 30 people 30 people at a go. What kind of punishment do you think Kony deserves? Explain the three reasons you learned from the Gombe story. Thank you, teacher. Yeah. Thank you so much, Philip, for that wonderful read. So we are going to have a pre-reading activity. Even before I read, I want you to reflect on the challenges that you're facing. Yes, uh, you can just write them somewhere. Even if we get like three or four people to share, 
we are going to be okay for purposes of this short lesson. So think about the challenges you're facing as you're going through your life, your education. Mm, just write them down. Then the next question is about, uh, yes, the role of education. If you weren't in school, what kind of person would you be now? Mm, please write that down. Just, just briefly. If you take us, take a, take a step back and think about your life. What if you weren't in school? Which kind of person would you be? What if you had left school in primary four? Where would you be? What would you be like? Would it be a good story? Most chances are high that it would not be a good story. So as we read the story, let's try to reflect on our own lives and think. It makes us uh, to be in position to answer. Okay, so we shall meet uh, a person in this story called Connie. And then who has killed over 300 people at a go in a trading center. Then what kind of punishment do you think that person deserves? These are things you can think about even before you read. Yes, and then we shall have the lessons presented. Yes, uh, we can take like three minutes for the pre-reading activity. Think about the challenges you have faced in your education. If you're walking longer distances, if you're having challenges making friends, if you feel like you're confined, you feel not challenged by what you study. I mean, just think about your own challenges. We're going to compare the challenges you actually have and uh, Magombe, Bigombe in the, in the story. Okay, I don't know what's happening to my co-host. I see she's not here. Okay, be thinking about your own situation as we plan to have our reading. Mm. That your own challenges think about the kind of person you would be if you weren't in school and write your expression down you say i personally feel like i would be maybe married with many children i would be a father or i would be running a business somewhere just think about what it would be like if you weren't in school and then the punishment you think someone who kills over 300 citizens at a go deserves those are your three things for the pre-reading activity. And then we shall go to the reading as you listen. <laughs> ah, ah, I like the answers that I am seeing in this inbox. Oh, oh, okay. People, you can keep them coming or you write them in your book. We shall get to a point where we share when we are answering. However, Hannah has texted me that she has left the lesson. If there is any other person that has a laptop, uh, previously we had Patricia. Patricia, are you still on the call? Mm, Patricia, 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 Patricia is gone. Okay, friends, if you have a laptop and you think you can share with us um, the PowerPoint, please raise your hand and then and then um, I, I send you the work. 
then you display for us. Hannah has got technical challenges and she can't help anymore. She's actually off the lesson. She's going to catch it later. Any person, Nikki, are you using a laptop? Yes, but you you can send it to Nikki too. To Nikki too? Yeah. Who is Nikki too? Please raise your hand, Nikki too. Okay. Hmm. Raise your hand using Nikki too so that I send you. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Let me send you here my number. Ah, I like the answers in my inbox here. We are going to share. We are going to read them out when we get to that question. It's question two. Mm -hmm. Just a moment as I send the work to Nikki and then we shall progress with the reading and listening. Uh, be thinking about your answers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. People who are using the whiteboard, I hope you know that I'm going to remove you from the lesson. And your friends, be careful. Very, very careful. Please close the whiteboard. We are waiting for, the, for, for Nikki to share our work. So, Madam, yes, please. Have you sent the work to the chat or? I sent you my number. I want you to send me hello and then you will receive it instantly. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Peter Christmas. I hope you have overused your chance. Now we're going to be our class. Okay, okay, okay. That's number one. Person number one to me. Please close the whiteboard and don't play around with it. Like I told you last time, there are some cases I expect, but in senior one, when you're in senior three, you're about to become a candidate. The things you can't do.
。おー。Okay, Nikki, Nikki, are you there? Oh. Yes, Nikki, you want to unmute? Is there a challenge? Nikki. Oh. Yes, Faith, your hand is up. Yes, Madam. First, we're waiting to answer the question. Oh, okay. Just a moment. Just give me two minutes. I'm getting in touch with Nikki to have her display our work. Yes, Hope, your hand is up. Madam. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I'm also answering the question. Oh, okay. Just a moment. We want to first read the passage, which I have okay. here in the textbook. Uh, we just had a pre-reading activity as we prepare to answer some of the questions uh, concerning okay. our lives. Yes, thank you so much, though. Okay. Okay, so, Nikki. Madam, I sent yes, a message. Please. Oh. Okay, then. Thank you so much. Yes, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've sent the work and I can see you've seen it. So in just a bit, just a bit, we'll be able to have our work displayed again. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, in the meantime, you can be reading people's responses in the meeting chat. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I would be a drug addict. Ay, 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 ay. I would be a mother. Ay, cha, 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 cha. I would be a YouTuber. I would be a market vendor. Hey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes us appreciate the value of education. Okay. Nikki, I have already made you a co-host so you can share your screen. Okay. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. People have thought. Okay. Nikki, are you ready? Oh, very good, very good, very good. Here we are. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. Yes, Nikki, please open. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. Thank you, Nikki. Here we are. People, I wanted us to have the questions displayed before I start reading for you to reflect on them very well. Like we agreed in the previous in the previous uh, slides, when you're reading, it's very important to know which questions you want to answer for you to be in position to have directed reading or purposeful reading. So the passage I'm going to read out for you is entitled, The Woman Who Befriended Our Lord. Hey, the Woman Who Befriended Our Lord, published on 8th August, 2019. Yes. Um, people, can you hear me? I hope you can, because we've been having a good connection and I'm hoping we are going to follow. So I'm going to read twice. I'm going to read the passage twice for purposes of getting all the answers. When you get the answer, please write it down and then we will have a session where we share. So the story goes, when Betty Bigombe was growing up in Northern Uganda in the late 1950s, she walked four miles a day to go to school. She knew getting an education was the only way she could change her life and make a contribution to her community. 30 years later, her contribution would be to carry the fate of her region on her shoulders as she attempted to negotiate peace with Joseph Kony, the notorious leader of the Lord's Resistance Army. Bigombe was the eighth of 11 children and grew up in a society where polygamy is still practiced today. <clears throat> Without education, I probably would be having 20 children in some rural area carrying out the daily chores of going to the field to dig, harvest. One baby on my back and another one is crawling. One of the many wives, she says. Her family received financial and moral support from the church as she continued to study throughout her teens and ultimately that led to the that led to the offer of a fellowship from Harvard University. Okay. Um, in the early 1980s, she returned home as a married woman with two children. Her country was in the middle of a war that pitted President Milton Obete's forces against the Gorilla movement in Yo of Yoweri Museveni. At that time, I was hiding some people who were supporting President Museveni. I worked with a German woman who, who was with the UNHCR agency and we smuggled people whose lives were in danger to Kenya. With a UN flag, it was okay. We could go through roadblocks 
and get them to safety. Uh, so a lot is said there later on. So Bigombe came up with a proposal. War had broken out in the north of the country as she, she volunteered to go and find out where the rebels were and where they kept their weapons. Museveni came back with a counter proposal. He agreed to send Bigombe to northern Uganda on one condition that she negotiated with the factions to stop fighting. Her friends and family thought this was a suicide mission. A lot of people told me, resign, he wants you dead. Friends came and said, this is not a woman's job. Why does he give it to you? You have no experience. Suddenly, nobody else was brave enough to try to negotiate with Joseph Kony, the leader of the brutal Lord's Resistance Army. Kony was a former altar boy who now claimed he was God's messenger. He told members of his messianic cult to abduct and to abduct and rape girls, and he trained boys and girls to kill. The Lord's Resistance Army sent Bigombe a letter saying Museveni had insulted them by sending a woman to negotiate. They threatened to kill her, but she stayed, determined to end the war. They sent a victim of Connie's violence to deliver a second letter in person. This guy showed up. I don't know how he didn't die. There was no tetanus injection, nothing. His lips were cut off, limbs off, drenched in blood. The so-called letter that was addressed to me was all very bloody. Of course, I couldn't even touch it. Not deterred, Bigombe decided to write back to Connie. She referred to him as my son and used religion as a way of connecting with him. Eventually, Connie agreed to meet. She feared he would have her tortured and resolved to kill herself rather than be captured by him. Deep in the jungle, they met for the first time. He was guarded. There was a church, sorry, there was church music. Some men were dressed as nuns and had guns. They were singing hymns and falling down, saying that the demon was coming out of them. The scene was just incredible. He was wearing military uniform. He definitely came ready to intimidate me. In the next 18 months, during several face-to-face -face meetings, Connie started calling her mommy, Mami Bigombe. Eventually, he agreed to come out of the jungle for peace talks with President Museveni. Bigombe went to the president and told him they needed to establish the conditions for the peace talks. Instead, Museveni went to a public rally and threatened Kony, telling him to come out immediately or face the wrath of government troops. Kony and his forces responded by massacring 300 people in a trading center on the border with Sudan. Bigombe resigned and left for the U.S. He, she says, I was very devastated. I had a breakdown on the plane. It was very painful, a very, very painful defeat, but it wasn't about me. It was the suffering of the people, she says. Okay, that's the end of our article that was uh, published by BBC News. And I hope we have got some answers. Uh, so like I promised, I'm going to read it for the second time. Mm. Okay. I am going to read it for the second time for people that could have missed a point and uh, time is not on our side. So I want to start the second reading right now. Uh, so this passage is entitled The Woman Who Befriended a Warlord, published on the 8th of August, 2019. Um, the questions are still, describe the challenges Bigombe went through to acquire education. How would you compare these challenges with your own today? What role did education play in shaping Bigombe's future? If you weren't in school, what kind of person would you be now? How do you feel when you hear that Connie and his forces massacred 300 people at a go? Well, and what kind of punishment do you think Connie deserves? 
then explain three lessons you learned from Bigombe's story. Okay. Uh, so people that are asking that I share the passage, you are supposed to listen, not just read. I am testing your listening. You must be able to listen and answer. That's why the passage is not there. Even in the students' books, it's not there. It is only in the teacher's book. Yes, unless someone steals the teacher's book and takes a picture. But you are actually supposed to listen and answer. Okay, second and last reading. Okay. When Betty Bigombe was growing up in northern Uganda in the late 1950s, she walked four miles a day to go to school. She knew getting an education was the only way she could change her life and make a contribution to her community. 30 years later, her contribution would be to carry the fate of her region on her shoulders as she attempted to negotiate peace with Joseph Kony, the notorious leader of the Lord's Resistance Army. Bigombe was the eighth of 11 children and grew up in a society where polygamy is still practiced today. She says, without education, I probably would be having 20 children in some rural area, carrying out the daily chores of going to the field to dig, harvest, one baby on my back and another one crawling, me being one of the many wives. Her family received financial and moral support from the church as she continued to study throughout her teens and ultimately that led to the offer of a fellowship from Harvard University. In the early 1980s, she returned home as a married woman with two children. Her country was in the middle of a war that pitted President Milton Obote's forces against against the Gwedina movement of Yoweri Museveni. At that time, I was hiding some people who were supporting President Museveni. I worked with a German woman who was with the UNHCR agency and we smuggled people whose lives were in danger to Kenya. With a UN flag, it was okay. Um, okay. There are many things that happened here which I don't want to read. They're not part of the session. So Bigombe later on came up with a proposal. War had broken out in the north of the country and she volunteered to go and find out where the rebels were and where they kept their weapons. Museveni came back with a counter proposal. He agreed to send Bigombe to northern Uganda on condition. She negotiated with the factions to stop the fighting. Her friends and family thought this was a suicide mission. A lot of people told me, resign, he wants you dead. Friends came and said, this is not a woman's job. Why does he give it to you? You have no experience. Suddenly, nobody else was brave enough to try to negotiate with Joseph Kony, the leader of the brutal Lord's Resistance Army. Kony was a former altar boy who now claimed he was God's messenger. He told members of his messianic cult to abduct and rape girls, and he trained boys and girls to kill. The Lord's Resistance Army sent Bigombe a letter saying Museveni had insulted them by sending a woman to negotiate. They threatened to kill her, but she stayed determined to end the war. Then they sent a victim of Connie's violence to deliver a second letter in person. Bigombe says, this guy showed up. I don't know how he didn't die. There was no tetanus injection, nothing. Lips cut off, his limbs cut off, drenched in blood. The so-called letter was that was addressed to me was all very bloody. Of course, I couldn't even touch it. Not deterred, Bigombe decided to write back to Connie. She referred to him as my son and used religion as a way of connecting to him. Eventually, Connie agreed to meet him. She feared he would have her tortured and resolved to kill herself rather than be captured by him. Deep in the jungle, they met for the first time. He was guarded. There was church music. Some men were dressed as nuns and had guns. 
they were singing hymns and falling down, saying that the demon was coming out of them. The scene was just incredible. He was wearing military uniform, and he definitely came ready to intimidate. In the next 18 months, during several face-to-face -face meetings, Connie started calling her mommy Bigombe. Eventually, he agreed to come out of the jungle for peace talks with President Museveni. Bigombe went to the president and told him they needed to establish the conditions for the peace talks. Instead, Museveni went to a public rally and threatened Connie, telling him to come out immediately or face the wrath of government troops. Connie and his forces responded by massacring 300 people in a trading center on the border with Sudan. With that, Bigombe resigned and left for the US. She says, it was very devastating. I was devastated. I had a breakdown on the plane. It was a very painful defeat, but it wasn't about me. It was about the suffering of the people. Yes. So that's our passage. Now let's answer the questions. Very fast, we have like six minutes for this activity, then we get to the last part of the lesson. Okay, if you can answer for us, number one, describe the challenges Bigombe went through to acquire education. Raise your hand. Okay. Faith, are you ready to answer number one? Yes, teacher. Wonderful. Go ahead. Number one is saying, describe the challenges Bigombe went through and Bigombe went through to acquire education. Mm. One of the challenges is that she walked miles. Okay. She walked miles to school. Then she also felt a challenge of shortage of funds since she came from a polygamous family and she was the eighth child of all. Okay. Then she, she also faced a challenge of undermining from her fellows, since they did not believe in her that she could make peace, peace with Connie. Then okay. how, hmm. how compare the challenge? How would you compare those challenges with your own today? Yes, but moving of miles from one from home to school. Okay. It's one it's a big challenge. So undermining they undermine you at school, people think you can't make it, yet in you it makes you lose faith in you, yet you have to have faith in you as yourself. Then sort of and also, it, it's mm. the same. There are the same challenges that I also face. Okay. Ah, thank you so much, Comfort, for that wonderful answer. It deserves a hand clap. You have done it so well. And uh, I am glad that you've managed to identify the main challenges because from the story, Bigombe had to walk a long distance to school. She also grew up in a polygamous family of many children, yes, where education was not very obvious and guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And yes, thank you for that wonderful comparison. I can tell that you know that when you're comparing, you show if you have the same challenges or if they are different. So you've answered that correctly. And yes, on a personal level, I pray that God makes it easier for you. Okay, so let's get someone for number two. Number two, Tronella, do you think you can give us number two? Okay. Tronella? Madam, let me first analyze. Okay, let me try Hope. Hope, do you think you can answer number two? Mm. Hope, 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 where is hope? Please unmute hope. Oh, okay. Oh, let me give it to Joshua. Yes, Joshua, thank you. 
Yes. So uh, the question, I'm not. May I have a look at the question? Mm, it's about the role of education. Which role do you think education played in Bigombe's life? What would have gone wild if she wasn't in school? So let me first answer what would go wild mm. if she wasn't in school. Number mm. one, uh, she would be digging and harvesting in a garden. Why should be digging and harvesting in a garden? While mm. having very many children, she cannot be able to take care of. Mm. And now let me go to the question of how education, the role of education mm. uh, in shaping her, her future. So number one, due to having knowledge of education, she was able to get married. Um, she was also able to coordinate with the UN to be able to send some of those uh, hostages to Kenya. She would be able to, she also had the knowledge of peace talks, of having peace talks with uh, both Museveni and Kony. So without education, she wouldn't be able to form up such peace talks, she wouldn't even be able to coordinate with the UN. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now talk about yourself, Joshua. What if you were not in school? Uh, where would you be? Which kind of person would you be? Well, I would be a person who would be living lawlessly. Okay. I wouldn't be having any limits mm. since I don't, since I wouldn't be having the knowledge of education. Mm. I would be going to bars, drink alcohol, I would be smoking. Okay. Yes. So I'd be generally living lawlessly. Okay. Thank you, Joshua. You've answered that very well. Education indeed played a vital role in shaping Bigombe's future. It saved her from marrying at an early age and producing children aimlessly, you know, you know, and getting confined in a life of poverty, stress, and polygamy. So education preserved her to save her region entirely. Yeah, thank you so much for that beautiful answer. We already had many other answers in the meeting chat, remember? People told me there would be hawkers, there would be YouTubers, vendors, married with 20 children. Some boys here in my class told me there would be husbands to like three wives. Yeah, so uh, that, that, you know, that may sound hilarious, but it should go back to the basics of the role of education. It saves you from, from the pants of, of bad life. Yes. Someone said, ah, ah, I would be in my business getting a lot of money, not waiting after 20 years to get a job. No, no, no. It should be taken that you're preparing yourself for a better, better future and a better job. Okay. So we move on to number three. Anyone willing to answer for us number three? Number three, which question is it? Mm. How do you feel? Yes, about the killing. Ah, this should be very easy. We've already learned how to express our feelings. Uh, let me see. Oh, Tronella again. Any other person? So that Tronella comes second. Mm -hmm. Yes, comfort. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? I feel so devastated because he killed many people and it led to the loss of very many people's lives and family members. And I feel, I also feel so hurt that she went scot without being punished. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful presentation. Yes, Tronella. Uh, madam. Yes, please. Okay, I feel shocked because you're not killing 30 people, 300 people at once. Uh -huh. Mm. And okay. I feel fear killing somebody, you need to be hard hearted. Mm. And I also feel disappointed because I thought Connie was going to be a better person. Yes, but I feel yes. of what he did. Then okay. I feel terrible. 
mm-hmm. terrifying because it's something that okay like it, it's it doesn't okay like deserve to be in people killing somebody mm-hmm. you lose respect okay thanks thank you so much comfort for that wonderful submission these answers are correct Okay, so I have Nikki. Yes, Nikki, you can unmute. Okay, thank you, madam. Mm-hmm. So I am angered by Connie's uh, behavior. Uh, all those mm-hmm. And then, as I was Betty, Betty, I, amazed by her. I her. To the mother. No one would go no and try to trap Then, then what? Yeah, that one. Yeah, okay. Thank yeah, okay. you so much. Thank you so much. For that wonderful answer. For that wonderful answer. Okay. Mm. So, yes, it is very true that you feel shocked, uh, alarmed, terrified, horrified, disappointed, frustrated, devastated. All those are valid answers, and I'm glad that we now know how to express our feelings. Finally, for this activity. Oh, no, no, no. We we need to get... uh, This question has another segment, and I want you to always be keen as you're answering your questions in your exam. Some questions have two sections. So, uh, for example, number three, if it has two marks, and you only give us your feelings without giving the punishment, you get a half. You get one out of the two. So let's always be keen not to leave out those last segments because they always have their own special marks. Okay. What kind of punishment do you think Connie deserves? Mm, Samsung. I didn't get your name. Now I'm finished. Is it Arnold? Please unmute. If you're using Samsung SM. Oh, I can't get you. Okay, let me see. Yes, Lynn. Mm -hmm. You're unmuted, please speak. Oh dear, I can't hear you. Your network is not cooperating. Okay, Heather. Okay, Heather is also not talking. Dega Dash. I think he deserves a punishment of death sentence in all ways oh. possible. You feel like he deserves a death sentence? In all ways possible. In all ways possible. Okay, okay. That is Dash's response. Mm-mm-mm. After reading this story, it's like, Connie deserves a death sentence. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Mm. Okay, finally for this question, Let's look at the lessons. Lessons. Uh, like I told you, I included this for us to learn how to present lessons. Your lessons should be presented in form of adverbs, sorry, of proverbs or facts of life. Proverbs or facts of life. Yes, and I'm giving you as uh, an example. From Bigombe's story, I come to agree that it is better to try and fail, but never fail to try. Yes, that's how I want you to present your, your answers concerning lessons. Don't say I learned to what? No, it is better to try and fail, but never fail to try. And I have many other examples I'm going to give you, uh, but that is after your submissions. Okay, what are some of the lessons you learn from this story of Bigombe? Please raise your hand. I'm interested in people that have not said anything. At least give us a lesson. Show us that you have learned a lesson. 
I'm going to start with Tronella again. Uh, madam, mm. is it okay for me to answer in similes? Uh, give me your answer, I see. Uh, I in according to the story, I learned that Bigombe was a lion in the fight, cause going to some to uh to a uh, what a war a war lord, it's something mm. hard. So I learned to be a lion in a fight. I I I hope we can make it uh, a, a a proverb or a life saying. Uh, maybe that with courage, everything is possible. How about that, Tronel? Okay. Mm. So you come to agree that with courage, everything is possible. possible. And whenever you're presenting your lessons, don't put that phrase, I learned that. It makes the answer null and void. Okay? Just present the saying, with courage, okay. everything is possible. With courage, even the hardest problems can be solved with, and even peacefully. Uh -huh. Very good. I need other okay. people to give me lessons. I have some people that have not said anything. Megan, do you intend to give me any answer today? Megan, Megan, Adikini. Let me first give you an opportunity to unmute. Megan, give me a, a lesson. Which lesson do you learn from this story? Mm -hmm. Okay, Faith, can you give me your lesson? Uh -huh. Mine is, do not judge a book by its cover because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, friend, uh -huh. the, the friends saw Big Embe has a woman and she could not make it not knowing that she is capable of doing it. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Faith. That's a correct response. Uh -huh. Yes, Malik. Impressive. Let's get some more lessons. Uh, what I learned is that to not be a coward in fighting genocide. Genocide. Okay. Of that is my submission. Hey, how? You must explain it a little bit. Who was not a yeah, coward? What, what did they do? What she did, she went and met a dangerous man who was even making who was even making General 7 to Shiva. <laughs> so she was not a coward. She was not yeah. a coward in the way that she managed to reach and made a peace talk, even though that the man refused, but she showed she she expressed her feeling fighting genocide in, in northern Uganda. Okay, thank you so much, Malik. Yes, but uh, in the story, Museven, Museven didn't shiver. Mm, he refused to shiver. But yes, the man is dangerous. And the fact that we go and be faced him makes us realize that we should not fear the face of danger. Okay, finally, finally, from you, let me get Nikki. Oh, Nikki, are you there? Okay. Uh, so here on my list I had, sweet or beautiful words can soften a hardened heart. That's a lesson. Hey, from this story, you've learned that sweet words, like my son, you see, Bigombe calls Connie, my son. And, you know, after 18 months, Connie also starts calling her mommy. So, yes, sweet and beautiful words can soften a hardened heart. Uh, next, a woman can do great things that may not even be attempted by men. A mother can sacrifice her life to save her children. Yes, expressed by the statement from the story, my son. And uh, Bigombe's love for her region and willingness to try. Okay, so those are some of the lessons. The most important thing is for us to learn that 
you present your lessons in form of proverbs or sayings, wise sayings. Okay, Nikki is back. Nikki, do you want to give us your lesson? Yeah. Yes, please. So, lesson, uh, a woman's wisdom can mm. calm down the strongest storm. So wow. why do I say? Explain it. Yeah. So Betty, even knowing that the warlord is very harmful, she still had to go to him. She showed her hope and resilience. She, was, she, uh, she showed change, peace, and reconciliation. Though slow, but she knew that she would achieve it. So that shows the power of a woman. Okay. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful answer over there, Nikki. Okay, um, we are now moving on to the next part of our session, which is the last one. Uh, Nikki, what happened to our display? Nikki, are you there? Okay, thank you, Patricia. Let's go to the next slide. I need a volunteer to read for us pretty fast. Our time is fast spent, but the last part is very simple. We are learning how to use adverbs of debris. Mm. So I need a volunteer to read. Yes, Hadia. In S1 and S2, we studied about adverbs. For example, fast, quick, very quickly, proudly, etc. Adverbs of degree are words that show the extent slash degree slash magnitude of something. For example, an action, a feeling, etc. For example, it was blazingly hot, but we carried on working. Mokasa is a hero, but is highly celebrated. The bullet in his arm was excruciatingly painful. Thank you so much, Hadia. So it's self-explanatory. Adverbs of degree are words that we use in English to show the extent of something. If, if, if your mother asks you to carry a saucepan and you say it is hot, to what extent? Yes, you can tell your mother it is very hot. It is quite hot. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it can be blazingly hot, dangerously hot. So those words that you use to show the extent, how big, how deep, how wide, those are the words that we call adverbs of debris. Okay, uh, so we have many others in the next slide. Patricia, you can take us there. You can write them if you're taking note in your book. Mm, we can write them. I wanted us to mention them, but let's just write them the way they are. I'm going to save one minute. Those that show intensity, very extremely, immensely, really, strongly, remarkably, most incredibly, enormously, greatly, deeply, highly, terribly, awfully, and a lot. Mm -hmm. those are some that you can use please write them in case you get any assignment and they ask you to use adverbs of degree you will have to use them to show an extent Okay, we can have them. You can take like a screenshot or you write those that you didn't know. Or just for record purposes, you write some. Okay. Uh, one minute is gone. Let's move to our very last slide, which has our assignment. Uh, someone will read for us. We have 10 answers to have. So you can first write the words in the bracket. 
mm, for us to because you're going to be filling them in using the words in the bracket in the in the table okay favor favor you can read the instructions and the words in the table for us complete the following sentences using the words from the table you have you may have to find the meanings of the words breathtakingly blindingly more passionately incredibly stunningly frighteningly and furthermore extremely most generously painfully tremenda tremendously most incredible most credible okay most thank credible. you so much Faber. thank you so much favor for the wonderful read so friends you can write these words down to avoid going back and forth, we can just have them written down and then we shall answer the questions. This is the very last task for this lesson. Very, very last, last one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So who wants to read for us number one? Number one, I'm interested in people that have not said anything. Hey, some people have joined this lesson quiet. They have gone through it quiet and they are going to live quietly without even saying thank you or saying bye to anyone. Madam, let go Okay, okay. Yes, Patricia, thank you. Patricia, you can Complete. do number one. Yeah. Do number one. Mm. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke dash, about civil rights than any other patriot in the world. Mm. Which one do you think is the correct answer from the table? more passionate why are you saying it why are you saying it uh, fearfully say it confidently because it's correct and plan on defending it because I'll ask you why you have chosen it it's correct but why I don't know <laughs> really when do we use more I just think it's more passionately. Mm. Yeah. Why? Is he compared to any other person? Mm. Okay. Uh, let me see if there is anyone else willing to defend this answer. Someone using Galaxy Fold 6. Unmute, tell me your name and help us, tell us why you think uh, the first answer is more passionately. It is correct, but I want to know the reason. Yes, it's correct because uh, we have the two subjects in the center. Mm -hmm. Which are? So that, so that means we're supposed to use more. Mm. That's nice. okay. Thank you so much. So Martin Luther King Jr. is compared to any other patriot in the world. So it's him against any other patriot in the world. And the mere fact that we have than calls for more, more passionately than. Mm, that is why we get more passionately to feel number one. Okay, number two. Thank you so much, my dear. What's your name? The person using Galaxy. I'm called Stallone. Okay, thank you, Stallone. Okay, but the number two. Anyone willing to do number two for us? Please raise your hand. 
please raise your hand if you can answer number two, number two, number two. Mother Teresa had dash devoted her time and love to the oppressed and brokenhearted all over the world. Which of these adverbs of degree do you think will make it correct? Bridget, I think you can um, try this. Bridget, Bridget Jones. I have two Bridgets, by the way. Bridget Jones. Uh oh, Bridget Jones is not responding. Guest. Someone's name is Guest. Hmm. Okay. Guest, unmute. Tell us your name. Then go ahead to answer number two. Jay, 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 Jay. Okay. Uh huh. Shazam, thank you. Uh, yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mother Teresa had extremely devoted her time and love to the oppressed and broken hearted all over the world that's that's how i that's how i think of it okay i would take that uh, extremely goes on different different sentences yes i would take that thank you um, thank i you. hope we have written these words down because i want us to answer even the last question so patricia you can take us to the last slide Okay, uh, who is going to read for us number three and complete it wisely? Uh, let me see, let me see whose hand is up. Hey, guys, I only have my two boys. I need other speakers, people that have not said anything. Sanders, good. Okay. Sanders, number three. Um, all patriots in East Africa have incredibly contributed towards the establishment of democratic government in their countries. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That passes. Amazing. Let's get someone for number four. If we can do this very fast, we shall end our lesson in the stipulated time, much as we've lost some minutes. Okay. Number four. Let me give it to Lighton. Yes, Lighton. Oh, that's a beautiful name. Yes, Lighton. Kelly Bagole, the tire was the most credible Ugandan music legend whose songs penetrated the world, thus raising the Ugandan flag high. Okay, thank you so much. Mm, I love that. Welcome. Mm, was the most credible Ugandan was the most credible Ugandan music legend. Amazing. Number five. Who is doing five for us? Bridget Binaisa. Bridget, do you think you can do number five? Okay, Bridget can't unmute. There is someone called Cats. Cats, Cats, I've been seeing you planning to give you number five, but now I don't know where you've gone. I think Cats has left the lesson. Ah, it's here. Okay, Cats, you can unmute and answer number five. Hello. 
Ah, uh, the party venue was stunningly beautiful. Okay, thank you. That's correct. Mm, okay. Yes, Karen. Karen, you can raise your hand. I can see you. Please unmute and give me an answer to number six. Karen, you're already unmuted. Oh, sorry. Okay, let me give it to Mega. One number seven. Okay, please go ahead. Judge is extremely bright. He's always top of his class. Okay, thank you. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Let me see who is doing number six for us. Uh, Karen, do you want to try again? Okay. Huh? Yes, Karen. Oh. Karen. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we are trying to hear. You give us your answer and see if you can get it. Judge is extremely right. He's earned some of his class. Okay. Thank you. Karen, I want you to do number six. Number six. Mm -hmm. In what Somalia mm -hmm. people are painfully suffering. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much for being abrupt and prompt thank you faith uh faith has gone let me see light on do you want to do eight yes teacher yes go ahead accident was the moment mm -hmm. uh okay the accident was extremely gruesome. The accident scene was extremely. You know, we have already used uh, extremely. I want you to pick another adverb of degree. Okay, threat, madam, threateningly. Yes, yes, thank you. That's correct. The accident scene was frighteningly gruesome. Okay, thank you. Number nine, who is doing nine for us? Faith. Faith, Faith, Faith is back. Is back. Madam. Yes, please. No, yes, please. Number nine and it's already done. Which number one? eight, I Which one? one? I was going to do number eight, but it's already done. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Lean. Lean. Hey. Hey. Lean, you can unmute. Lean, you can unmute. Lean, do number nine. Oh. Sorry, Lean. Okay, let me give it to Isaac. Isaac, number nine. Isaac. People, time is not on our side. Isaac, I can't hear you. Okay, let me give this to Trevor. Trevor has not said anything. It's a good time to say. Number nine. Uh, num 
Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Trevor. Okay. Number nine says, wow, you, you are dash smart in the blue suit. Are you going to attend the patriotism seminar? So my answer is, wow, you are stunning. You are stunning smart in, in that blue suit. Are you going to attend the patriotism seminar? Okay, you are stunningly, stunningly smart. smart. Thank you, Trevor. That's correct. Yes, stunning is related to beauty and glam. So let's get someone for number 10. I'm going to give Tronella a chance. Her hand has been up for so long. Yes, Tronella. Uh, number 10. As soon as as soon as I stepped on the road, my eyes were flashed with lights that were tremendously bright. Okay, thank you. Do you think tremendously is the best option? There is another word I'm seeing. <laughs> Somewhere there on the second row. Uh, -huh. uh -huh. Tronella, do you want to try again? The lights were what? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you've seen the answer, raise your hand. Beth, Beth, do you want to try? Oh, Beth is not talking. Leticia? Leticia, you can unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. I think as soon as I step. Okay, I think the answer is blinding. Now you read it. Read the sentence and complete it. As soon as I step the road, my mm -hmm. eyes were flashed with lights that were blindingly bright. Thank you. That's correct. Thank you. Second last for today. Mm, someone, Lenovo. Someone is using a Lenovo tab. Please unmute. Give me your name and the answer. Yes, my name is Katusabe Emmanuel. Yes, Emmanuel. I think the numbers. The traffic jam was. The traffic jam was mostly generously thick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel, you again. Remember, most generously. Mm. Where did we use it? Where did we use it? We use it. We used it somewhere. Um, Teacher, let me try again. Mm -hmm. Try another word that can explain traffic jam. Traffic jam was breathtaking. Thick. You know, breathtaking is someone that is something that is very nice. Hmm? Yes. Mm -hmm. So look for another one. Because traffic jam, mm -mm, it never looks so breathtaking. I think I have failed. Oh, don't give up. Let's see. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Give it one last try. Okay, the traffic jam was an unfathomably. Mm -hmm. There is this word Unf I have failed to read it. Yes, unfathomably. Unfathomably. Like you can't yeah. imagine it. You cannot even count these cars and finish them. That is what it means. And I think it is the right response. 
it was unfathomable big something that beats your understanding like you can't quantify it okay thank you and finally for today you won't be allowed in you are dash late for the heroes day celebrations who wants to give us the the adverb of degree there someone that has not spoken isaac the last time i chose you the network didn't give you leeway but if you can unmute now isaac okay oh sorry uh patricia my co-host wants to do this one You won't be allowed in. You are extremely late for the Heroes Day celebrations. Yes, thank you. That's correct. All right. Thank you. We could put our last slide that has the end and we say our last words. Thank you so much, friends, for taking part in this lesson. Thank you for your patience from the beginning to the end. You, you're all so wonderful. So today we looked at different things. We looked at uh, our lesson review. We remembered what we covered last time. We agreed that we looked at a comprehension passage and uh, remembered the tips we have to follow when we are answering questions concerning comprehension. We agreed that you should start with the questions and then read the passage for you to have a guided reading. Uh, so we moved on to another topic for today, where we we, we looked at, um, what did we cover first? We looked at, at a story we had comprehension. Yes, we looked at that. Under patriotism, mm -hmm. we managed to do some learning. We, we listened to a passage. We showed competence in listening and answering i didn't give you access to any of this passage you just had to listen and answer and i'm very grateful that we managed to answer the questions correctly showing that yes if someone speaks english to us we can actually listen and answer then we also looked at adverbs of degree where we agreed that these are words that help us to show the extent or degree or magnitude of something. It can be the magnitude of a feeling, of an action, or an expectation, or anything. So we had words like breathtakingly, stunningly, very, extremely, and many others. And we have concluded our lesson by doing a passage about them. I thank you so much for taking part in our lesson. Patricia, Hannah, and Nikki, I thank you for helping with the broadcast. For all those that have given answers may god bless you i pray that you will be able to move further in life because of your acts of kindness and patriotism and i pray that most importantly as you go back to your homes to your communities back to your schools you will be students that make a difference finally for today don't forget to say thank you to your sponsors to the people that make it possible for you to attend these lessons there are very many students who would love to take part and benefit, but they don't have access. They can't get a gadget. They can't get data. And no one even cares about them. Or even when they care, they, they are not acting upon it. So don't take it for granted. Say thank you to the person that sponsors you or makes it possible for you to attend this lesson. May God bless you. May God keep you. And uh, I pray that as you go back to your schools, you'll be ready for being candidates. This is senior three, your candidates, your our candidates next year. I pray that you will do your very best and may God bless your best efforts. Bye-bye. Yes. Yes, thanks for appreciating. Bye. Bye-bye. Mm, Bye-bye, teacher. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for the lesson. You're most welcome. Hey. Okay.